What's happening players, in today's tutorial we're going to make our website look a little bit more professional and also fancy up our navigation bar here as you can see. Obviously there's still stuff to be done here but it's getting there. What's going on guys? For the beginning of this tutorial we're just going to start out with Inspector and start messing around with some different things. Um, getting our page looking more professional. As of right now, you can see the text goes from the very left hand side of the browser all the way to the very right. Generally, you won't see that in a, web a website. Uh, generally, there will be some white space over here, and there's a max width that we set for the whole body of our page. So if you go into Inspector and just click on the body element, what we're going to do first is we're going to say the width is 100%. And that's going to be pretty much the exact same how it is now. But we also want to define a max width. So there's going to be a limit where the 100% only goes up to a certain amount of pixels. So as you can see there, um, already there's a bunch of white space. It's cut our page off about here. And we want to center this throughout our page so the white space is on both sides. So what we're going to do is type out margin. And what margin is, if you can see down here, it just adds some extra space around the element. Um, so what we're going to define is saying, hey, yeah, we don't care about adding space to the top or the bottom of our page. We just want the space to be added to the left and the right. So anytime you use one of these properties, whether it be margin, padding, uh, anything that affects four different sides, like margin left, um, 120 pixels or something like that and you can do that for each one of those margin left margin uh, top margin right margin bottom and you can define what you want your margin to be but instead you can just define all four properties within uh, one line of code here so it's gonna say we're gonna define all aspects of the margin first one that's gonna be defined is this is gonna be for everything if we only give one property um, or I'm sorry one parameter within here it's gonna put a margin on the top bottom left and right um, if we want just the top and bottom to be the same and the left and the right to be the same that's gonna be two different proper or two different uh, inputs that we give so for example we could do uh, 10 pixels here and what this is defining is saying hey for the top and the bottom have a margin of 120 pixels for the left and the right have a margin of 10 pixels and we can go even one step further and define three properties um, for example 14 pixels here so now what we're defining here is saying hey the top is going to be it's it's always kind of clockwise if you think of it that way um, it's saying the top is going to be 120 pixels and then the left and the right is going to be 12 pixels and at the bottom uh, it's going to be 14 pixels and you can kind of see that within this image down here as well and if we wanted to find all four uh, sides that have different margins for example you could do uh, four different aspects and again that's gonna be top right bottom and then left it goes clockwise um, so that's an easy way to think about it um, otherwise you can also do margin dash left margin right bar whatever you want there um, but what we actually want is to have a zero margin for the top and the bottom and we actually want to auto whatever is left so for in this example it looks like the auto feature says that hey I know your max is 960 pixels it looks like there's 708 pixels left over I'm gonna split that in half and give it uh, 354 pixels on the left side 304 pixels on the right side so if we go back to our page it looks a lot nicer and even if we scale down our window a little bit it's always gonna set that auto feature and keep it in the exact center so that's one way you can center things by um, just adding a margin property of auto and again, um, margin is just some extra space around uh, around our element. So that looks pretty good as well. We might want to copy this over into our code. Um, so again, we're just going to define the body. And generally, within these files, you want to keep um, you kind of want to keep it in the same format as your HTML. Um, so body was defined first in our HTML. So we want to have it at the top of our page. And we're just going to have a width of 100% of what is available a max width of 960 pixels looks pretty good and we want to set our auto margin uh, to center it horizontally so again zero pixels on top and bottom and we want auto for left and right side so that looks good um, let's go back to our, our navigation that we were working on the last tutorial and again we can't really mess around with it until we define 
all of our links within our CSS so then we can play around with it in Inspector. So we're going to go back to our uh, CSS file and we're going to add those uh, links which will be nav and then it's uh, a list item and there's a link within those list items and that's where we're going to define our style. So the first thing that we want to do, um, I'm just going to save this and reload our page. So now when we grab this link we can edit uh, our styles here. The first thing that we want to do is probably have text align center, which it, it already is, so uh, that's not too big of a deal. Well, let's add a background color to our links as well. So we can actually see what we're working with. And again, uh, background color is just going to be background dash color. Pretty simple to remember. Again, it's just one of those things you have to get familiar with uh, for all these. Um, and, and I'm sorry that I know I'm just kind of uh, typing this out and not explaining it. I know in the last tutorial uh, we used the float left and I didn't really explain that so I apologize. Uh, it might be a little bit confusing but what we did is we said instead of stacking these elements just float everything to the left it just keeps stacking until you reach the end of the page and then go to the next line and keep stacking stuff to the left. Don't go up and down for now just keep pushing things to the left and since each of those elements were only a width of one third. We we're able to fit all three on one line of code up here, or on one row. So that's a uh, that's what happened with that. I know I didn't really explain that. Um, again, we'll be talking about this more through throughout the course when we use floats and and everything else. Um, again, right now it's just getting people familiar with uh, how this works. So we've added a background color to our element and. You can see it's just right around the text. So what we want is we want this whole element to be a block uh, display. So we're going to have a display block. So that's just going to say everything here um, is part of of this block. Um, this whole link, everything that's available, it's a block element. I I know that's terrible. Uh, once we get into inline and block that tutorial, I'm going to go over that in more depth. I'll explain what block is uh, in a future tutorial. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, another thing that we want to do is maybe add some padding, uh, make it a little bit taller. And again, we're going to do something similar with what we did with our margin. We're going to define all the padding for each of these elements, but instead we're just going to give it some top and bottom padding by adding you know, maybe 10 pixels and then saying zero pixels for the left and the right. We don't really care about the padding on the left and the right and it's gonna look a little bit nicer up there. Another thing that we could do is give it a border. Uh, let's do a border of one pixel. And this is kind of like when we added the border to our table, uh, you define how thick you want that border to be and what type you want it. You can either say solid or uh, like dotted, um, as you can see there. There's some other options, uh, but we're just gonna do a solid and then we want it to be an off color. And I kind of looked up some colors before this tutorial. Obviously, we don't want this blue that's using. Um, so I'm just going to do E0, E0, E0. Um, and that's going to give it a nice darker gray. That's looking pretty good already. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to get rid of some of these link styles here. Uh, but that's looking pretty good for our uh, navigation so far. Let's make it even better. Let's add a nice little shadow uh, to the back of of this navigation. So you do that with something called box shadow and this will work for most browsers. One thing you might want to check occasionally is if you're developing a very large site there's a lot of people using like Internet Explorer 6 from back when computers were invented pretty much and a lot of these things won't work. So if you go into like three uh, W3 schools which I kind of use this as a reference to make these tutorials but um, as you can see here it kind of defines what a box shadow is. You can test it out, and then it'll tell you what type of browsers it works on. So, for example, if someone's using Internet Explorer 8, it won't actually look right on on Windows Explorer 8, even though IE 11 is out right now. People still have old stuff, but generally Chrome will will work on Chrome. That's why a lot of people use Chrome. Um, but that's something to note as well. I know there's a lot of stuff in this tutorial already. So let's go ahead and try this out, add a quick box shadow. So 10 pixels by 10 pixels black. So again, you can see it just kind of moves it 10 pixels to the left and 10 pixels down, and then it's a black. That looks pretty terrible. Um, what we're actually gonna do instead is something called inset. So it's gonna reverse the shadow. It's gonna actually push it up into these links, as you can see here, instead of um, 
down along the outside of our links it's going to be on the inside so it's just kind of reversing our shadow but that still looks pretty terrible let's try and make this actually look a little bit better um, so what we're going to do is we're going to define our inset for uh, zero one pixel zero and then um, just a white so that'll be just a very light finesse uh, touch you can't really probably see it yet but we're also going to set another inset uh, for zero negative one pixel zero and then this is going to be da 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 uh, color and also we're going to do zero or comma zero zero uh, 15 pixels and we're going to have an rgb um, a value this is red green blue and alpha so we're going to define that as having a zero uh, zero zero and then just like a 0.7 um, for alpha and that looks like actually way too much. Let's let's make that more subtle with a 0 0.07. And that just gives it a nice little glow to it. Already our website's looking pretty sweet with that up there. Again, we might change this out to have some images or a better text and get rid of this text decoration. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to learn about hovering over links and changing the style when different things are happening. Whether you're hovering over or clicking, um, we're going to change the style of that. So hopefully we're getting a little bit more familiar with CSS. Again, a lot of this stuff uh, you might not recognize, but Google makes it really helpful when you're developing there. They'll say, say hey, this is what a, mo a margin is. It's padding on the outside of this. Here's your border. Here's some inner padding, but padding is innerward. Uh, margin is kind of outerward. So we're already kind of seeing a lot of things come into play and we're starting to learn um, what these things actually mean. We also know that we can stylize things differently um, by how many things that we're defining. And again, generally it goes top, right, uh, bottom, left. So like a clock. I know that's kind of a, again, just a monkey see monkey do tutorial, but I just want to show you a lot of different things throughout this course so you can kind of see what they do. Um, we'll get into some more theory about again like blocks or having something in line and what that all means so guys thanks again for watching and please subscribe please share these videos uh, i definitely appreciate it um, like the videos and do something cool today too don't don't sit at the computer all day so see you guys later and have a great rest of your day